Dear students, in the previous session, we learnt about what are alcohols, how are they classified, and also we learnt a very important area of uh, organic chemistry, that is IUPAC naming. If you are very familiar with this naming, and in future, for every of the organic topic, you will find at ease in learning organic chemistry. Because whenever we talk about uh, organic chemistry, we talk about equations. Both the reactant side and product side, you have to mention the names. So take a little more time to understand the UPAC naming and practice naming each and every compound available in the organic chemistry lessons. Today, our idea is to proceed towards preparation of alcohols. So, how to prepare preparation of alcohols? I hope, uh, dear students, in 11th standard we have learned um, content related to the preparation of alcohols. Most often we talk about alkyl halides on alkaline hydrolysis. That means by adding water in the presence of a, a sodium hydroxide. So they say aqueous NaOH and uh, alkyl halides, they react to give uh, alcohol. This is a well-known method. That means uh, when we talk about the Rx alkyl halides, these alkyl halides uh, in the presence of uh, aqueous sodium hydroxide, more amount of water is available. There, the bond breaks here. We have to understand few things here. The bond breaks here and uh, OH gets a negative charge. Sodium gets a positive charge in the presence of uh, water at best medium. And similarly, if you want to write this molecule for an easy understanding, CH3Cl. This is methyl, this is chloride, so methyl chloride is the name. Now we have to talk about uh, a particular reaction wherein chlorine will be removed and OH group will be added. That is our objective because then only we can prepare alcohols. Now in that case, somebody has to be removed and a new person has to be added. This we obviously see in our uh, football matches. A very renowned player uh, will be replaced with uh, a substitute player for some time. So that is the job of the manager and the coach. They often they do that and uh, you know the reason behind it. To give a little rest for the main player. And uh, the momentum of uh, the game can be enhanced. Uh, that may be the purpose. Similarly, here substitution takes place. So, what type of substitution? We have to understand the negative part of this uh, uh, compound, that is sodium hydroxide, is a, called as a nucleophile. Nucleophile, what do I mean by that word file? File refers to loving. That means a nucleus loving. And you can derive an easy meaning out of this word. Nucleus is positively charged. You know the basics of atomic structure. So the positive charged area of an atom is the nucleus. So Nucleus loving means, we don't mean that we are trying to go inside the nucleus. Uh, we have to understand positive loving. This way we can uh, interpret uh, positive loving species. Obviously, they should be of a negative charge. So, OH minus ion is a nucleophile. Now, here you consider this case also. This since the chlorine is an highly electronegative atom, so it will try to grab the electron of carbon 2. Then E may be receiving a negative charge after the heterolytic fusion of the bond. Then what happens? This can also be called as a nucleophile. Now we have to talk about substitution. 
substitution means in the place of one we are going to do a substitution with that of fellow. Similarly, in the place of uh, chloride ion, OH minus ion and nucleophile is going to attack. So that's what uh, we learnt in 11th standard. We call them as a nucleophilic substitution reaction. That is the SN type of reaction. Substitution nucleophilic. As you know, there is a class where into two types. Uh, that is the SN1 type of reaction and the SN2 type of reaction. So, SN2 uh, type of reaction, only primary alkyl halides will go for that reaction. And the SN1 type, uh, both secondary and uh, tertiary will go for it. So, um, uh, let us leave out the secondary case. Primary and the tertiary mainly will concentrate. Primary alkyl halides uh, will go for Hartwig's hydrolysis in the presence of sodium hydroxide to give an alcohol, a primary alcohol and um, that will follow SN2 type of reaction whereas the tertiary alkyl halides, uh, for example tertiary butyl um, bromide or tertiary butyl chloride when you are treating with uh, sodium hydroxide then it will go for SN1 type of reaction. What is the difference between SN2 to SN1? SN2 type of reaction, both the substrate and the nucleophiles importance is there in the reaction. That means uh, the nucleophile is OH minus, substrate is the organic compound. And when we are talking about SN1 type of reaction, there uh, only the substrate is playing a role there that tertiary butyl bromide will go for an intermediate that is a carbocation intermediate then the product will be formed so that is how we talk about the SN1 and the SN2 type of reaction some of the organic chemistry uh, topics suddenly you will come across a word called as a nucleophile, electrophile by then uh, if you are not familiar with these terms you may find that area a little difficult I hope uh, now the understanding is clear to you. This uh, Cl- minus will be removed and in the place OH group will be added. The simple way is by the nucleophilic substitution reaction we can form the alcohol. If you want primary alcohol, you go for it, say secondary order, tertiary. In the first method, as given in your textbook, uh, we have to talk about addition of water or H2O. For that we have to recall an important rule. What is that rule? Eh? Markovnikov's rule. Markovnikov's rule is applicable for unsaturated compounds mainly. What are unsaturated compounds? The previous class we have learned. And imagine uh, CH2, double bond CH2 group is there. This is called as ethylene or ethene. This particular group has a sigma bond and a pi bond. Out of these two bonds, uh, pi bond you can easily break. So imagine there's a uh, one one uh, electron is being uh, shared by this atom to form the pi bond. Eh? I'm breaking the pi bond thereby this particular carbon atom will get one electron, this carbon atom will get one electron. Now we are talking about a hydration, that is addition of uh, water. The formula of water is H2O. And H2O I can write H and OH. See how chemistry is simple. By breaking the bond here also you get one electron and one electron here. Thereby these two will join and these two will join and the resulting compound will be already CH2 with one hydrogen becomes CH3 a double bond will be converted into a single bond CH2 group is available and OH is available and this is a very easy way we can prepare an alcohol but uh, you may ask a question you know, what is the um, need of this Markovnikov rule the Markovnikov rule is not so important for the symmetrical alkenes. 
and it is uh, very useful for uh, unsymmetrical alkenes. See, this is ethene. Ethene is uh, symmetrical in nature. Both the sides one one carbon. If you break the bond, and if you talk about um, propene, this is one propene. Wherein double bond right side it has only one carbon, double bond left side it has uh, two carbons. So these type of alkenes are called as uh, unsymmetrical alkenes. In unsymmetrical alkenes we go for uh, hydration process. That means addition of water. Then there will be a trouble. What is that? I can do by the way I did for the last one. Left hand side hydrogen, right hand side OH group. This is one method. Or another possibility. Left hand side you add OH group and right hand side you add hydrogen. And uh, obviously depending upon the addition of these two products, the product will differ. The reactants if you add differently, the product formation will differ. How? The first way of doing, look at that, CH3, CH2, single bond, CH2, OH. This will be the product. And if you go for the second way of adding, there is OH to the second carbon and hydrogen to this first carbon, we will get a product in a CH3, CHOH and CH3. And uh, are they same? Molecular formula may be same, but if you try to name this compound, we learn the basics of giving a UPAC name. 1, 2, 3 carbon, here also 1, 2, 3 carbon, both the places the rule says it is going to start with the pro. And single bonded, both the places it will end with the aim. Rule is very simple. Saturated compounds. And this compound is having a OH group that is attached to the first carbon, but this uh, compound is having a OH group attached to the second carbon. So how can I make the change? In both the cases, the functional group is alcohol only. And the rule says that you have to remove that E out of that hydrocarbon and add oil. That's fine. And where comes the difference is uh, this is propane 1 or this is propane 2 or that means that uh, alcohol is attached to the second carbon. So while uh, checking the name and looking at the structure we come across uh, some changes. That is because Markovnikov rule is followed now. And uh, they say the major product uh, will be this 2-propanol and minor product will be 1-propanol. This will be produced more in amount, this will be produced less in amount. And to make this rule very simple, this way it won't happen and it will happen this way. That I have to, we have to understand, on either side of the double bond we have carbon atoms and I will make this rule very easy for you. That uh, compare the hydrogens, here two hydrogens, in this carbon only one nitrogen. So hydrogen will prefer a side where more hydrogens are available and OH group will prefer a side where less hydrogens are available. Markovnikov rule will talk about the carbocation, the primary carbocation, secondary and tertiary. So the, uh, the carbocation will give the preference for the OH group addition. So that uh, is the main area. So the first uh, method of preparation we talked about uh, how to prepare alcohols by taking an uh, alkene double bonded compound. And in the second method we are going to talk about uh, GR. What are GRs? They are called as the grid knot reagents. Um, I think uh, you can recall we were 11th uh, standard learning about grid knot reagents. Uh, Grid knot reagents, uh, you can talk about their general geometry as uh, RMGX. That is uh, organo metallic halides, they are a grid knot reaction. So, to make it easier, I uh, will write CH3 MGPR. 
that is methyl magnesium bromide one of the Grignard reagent is taken the what is the main job of Grignard reagent they will do a process of adding an alkyl group to the reactant that is alkylation process will take place and why we are talking about Grignard reagent in this time we are trying to prepare alcohols so Grignard reagents can be used for the preparation of the alcohols. What is special is uh, these Grignard reagent can help us to prepare almost all the type of alcohols. We learned primary, secondary, tertiary. All these three types are possible. Let us learn one by one. If you want to prepare a primary alcohol, what has to be taken? I am going with the a compound which is known to you. I will write uh, in an easier manner, HCHO, yes, this is formaldehyde. So formaldehyde is going to react with the Grignard reagent. So what is the rule? Since this cardinal group is polar in nature and uh, this organic compound, an easy way of doing, carbon joins with the carbon and inorganic inorganic combination will happen. This is for uh, easy understanding. That is carbon will join with the carbon, NGBR will join with the oxen, thereby the bond will get shifted here. So O MGBR will be the addition product they called as adductor. Now I am writing exactly you see what is going to happen here. CH3 gets attached next to carbon with the two hydrogens. I can write CH2 and one MGBR. This is an adduct intermediate. And the next, next step it goes for hydrolysis, addition of the water. If you closely see, you will get one of the product as hydroxy magnesium bromide or bromo magnesium hydroxide is one of the product. And other one you see, CH3, single bond CH2 and OH, yes, that is nothing but ethanol or ethyl. Alcohol, if you closely see in the last uh, session we have learned, it is an example for a primary alcohol. And the same way, let us try preparing secondary alcohol. So, what is the difference between a primary alcohol and a secondary alcohol? If you understand the product, then the reactant you can plan it out. Primary alcohol will have CH2OH. If you want secondary alcohol, one of the hydrogen has to be removed and in the place one CH3 group has to be added. Then it will get converted into CHOH. That means the secondary alcohol. So same way you try it out in uh, formaldehyde. That means one of the hydrogen has to be removed and you have to add a CH3 group. Shall we try that out? See, look at this. CH3 hydrogen is removed and the CH3 group is added. And the C double bond O H. Let us have the same try. So the methyl group will join with the carbon and the MGBR will join with the oxygen. So similarly we will see the product here. CH3 carbon and on the top on CH3 and bottom on hydrogen and the bond ships so we will get OEMGBR. It's an adductive activity. Next step you know, we go for hydrolysis, addition of water and the resulting product you see, CH3, carbon and the joints with hydrogen to get CH and CH3 on the top and the OH. If you closely observe the molecule, that has a CHOH as a functional group attached carbon to nature, that means a OH attached carbon is a CH in nature, then it is a secondary alcohol. So here we form primary, here we have formed a secondary. Then you may be asking a question, okay, first for the preparation of primary alcohol, we took formaldehyde <coughs> and for the secondary alcohol, one hydrogen is replaced with the methyl group, then it gets converted into Acetaldehyde. Great. And our objective next is to prepare tertiary alcohol. And uh, as usual, if you want to convert this into tertiary alcohol,
dipole hydrogen has to be removed, one more methyl group has to be added. So the same thing you have to try it out in the reactant, then only that is possible. So in the place of one of the hydrogen, if you change it into methyl group, acetaldehyde will get converted into yes, ketone. And the name of the ketone is uh, acetone. The same strategy, methyl group will go and attack the carbon and the MgBr will go and attack the oxygen. Then what is the next compound? You will get a CH3 carbon and CH3 group here, CH3 and O MgBr. As usual, next step is we go for addition of water, then it gets converted into CH3. So all the places it is having CH3 group and OH3. And the final product you will look at the molecule, it is a tertiary butyl alcohol. There, that middle carbon which is attached to the OH group is not having any hydrogen at all. So it is a tertiary carbocation tertiary carbon and then uh, the product formed as a tertiary butyl alcohol. So thereby, depending upon the requirement, we can choose the reactant. Formaldehyde on uh, treatment of the Grignard reagent followed by hydrolysis gives you primary alcohol. The name of the alcohol, you know, ethyl alcohol, ethyl alcohol. Then uh, acetaldehyde on Grignard reagent treatment gives you a secondary alcohol. Name of the alcohol is isopropyl alcohol. Then acetone on Grignard reagent will give you tertiary butyl alcohol. So using Grignard reagent we can prepare all the three types of alcohols. The third method of preparing uh, alcohols uh, is uh, hydroboration. For that purpose, we need the presence of a diborane, that is B2H6, B2H6, diborane's presence is required. And also, a hydrogen peroxide in the second step in the presence of a sodium hydroxide, NaOH. So what are we going to do? We are going to take an alkene only. Let us take an alkene like CH3CH double bond CH2. This is propene or propylene, we go for 6 times and that is being treated with B2H6 in diborane. And the product will be CH3, actually the bond breaks there. One of the hydrogen will get handed up here, CH3, CH2 and CH2 and this will be added with boron. So, this is propyl group. Propyl group in uh, three times. Uh, so, this is tri propyl borane will be the product. And this is going for treatment with uh, hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide I can write as HOOH. The same thing uh, is going to react here. Imagine there are three molecules available and uh, I will stretch this molecule this way. CH3, CH2, CH2 and the three times of uh, propyl group. So if you learn chemistry by expanding the equations, your learning becomes easier. So now we are going for hydrogen peroxide three times and uh, this way by breaking the bond and after adding you see on the right hand side three hydrogen, one boron and three oxygen that is nothing but H3BO3 that is boric acid. And what is remaining? CH3, CH2, CH2, OH. This is nothing but uh, propyl alcohol that is N-propyl alcohol or we can talk about 1-propanol uh, which is the final product formula. So this way we can prepare 
alcohols. And the next, and next method we can talk about reduction of uh, carbonyl compounds or carbonyl group is the next method. As you know, the word reduction we have learnt in the basics. Uh, it is addition of uh, hydrogen or sometimes we remove oxygen is called as a reduction and for reduction we need to go for an agent, a reducing agent it can be lithium, aluminium hydride and or sodium borohydride and or you can go for raninical or metal catalysts like platinum, palladium all these can be preferred but in this area we are going to talk about lithium aluminum hydride especially because it will uh, yield a very good product uh, depending upon the reactant taken. Let us take uh, one of the example of a ketone CW bond O and CH3 acetone and acetone we are going for reduction that is uh, addition of hydrogen where in the carbonyl compound, in the carbonyl compound, the C double bond O group is there. It will break one of the bonds and uh, on either side one one hydrogens will be added. Then the resultant product will be CH3, CHOH and then CH3. So this is isopropyl alcohol or 2-propanol, propen 2 all is the product. So this is how we prepare uh, alcohol. Suppose the same thing can be taken for uh, an acid uh, on reduction also will give an alcohol. Example, I am going for maybe benzoic acid, C6H5, C double bond O and uh, OH. And here the bond you can break by adding two hydrogen and again lithium will give two more hydrogens and if you closely see the product formed as a C6H5 single bond carbon and this group has been removed as water and what are the reactants available C2H and one OH so CH2OH so this is uh, a benzyl group and this is an alcohol so the final formed uh, uh, product uh, formed is a benzyl alcohol. Reduction of the esters also. I will take the simplest ester possible CH3, C double bond O, O, C2H5. This is ethyl, this is uh, citate, so name of the compound is ethyl ester. When you go for addition of uh, hydrogen I can add uh, two hydrogens this way. Look at the product on right hand side with ethyl alcohol and the carbonyl bond will also break uh, thereby CH3, CH2, OH. Uh, so two molecules of the ethyl alcohol will be the final product. And what is the wonder of this lithium aluminum hydride? Uh, suppose you go for proton aldehyde CH3, CH double bond CH. Uh, single bond is CHO crotonaldehyde crotonaldehyde uh, has uh, two things to be reduced so one is uh, we can uh, convert the aldehyde this way for our understanding and it has a double bond over here crotonaldehyde is an unsaturated compound and a carbonyl group is having a carbon oxygen double bond too but it is very selective lithium aluminum hydride in uh, converting only this not this thereby the double bond will be retained so that won't be done by raninical or other reducing agent so what is the final product formed if you add a hydrogen here you will get CH3, CH double bond CH and CH2 OH so you will get converted into an alcohol if you give IUPAC name 1, 2, 3, 4 carbon so it is butyl and the double bonded, the double bond uh, is in second position so we can talk about but 2 e and the alcohol is in the first position rule says that uh, remove that E and add uh, oil 
So butte two e to one all is the name of the product. So this is how by the process of reduction we can prepare different types of uh, alcohols. Till now we learned uh, uh, the preparation of the monohydric alcohols. Till now we were talking about uh, the preparation of uh, monohydric alcohols. Now let us uh, talk about dihydric and uh, trihydric alcohols. Most familiar names only. Dihydric alcohol, we are going to talk about the preparation of glycol. And um, in trihydric, we are going to discuss about the uh, glycer How to prepare uh, glycol? Glycol is otherwise known as ethylene glycol. So, we are going to take uh, a reactant ethylene molecule. CH2 double bond CH2 is there. And that ethylene is going to be uh, treated with uh, Bayes reagent. I think uh, the name is not uh, a new one to you. Bayes reagent will not be. This is uh, coal, dilute, alkaline, potassium permanganate. That means uh, KMNO4, potassium permanganate. It's a very good oxidizing agent. Its job is to supply oxygen. And one more word we have to understand: dilute. Dilute uh, means more amount of water is there. So hydrolysis will also take place. And one of the pi bond we are going to break, wherein we are going to add water. Water's formula I'm going to write H O H. And after breaking the bond, one hydroxyl group will be added uh, uh, to this CH2, another hydroxyl group will be added to this CH2, then we will get CH2 single bond CH2 and uh, two OH groups are being added. And this is the ethylene glycol. If you want a UPAC name, two carbons, the name starts with the ether. Single bonded, the name ends with the aim, and uh, there are two OH groups available. Alcohols have been named by adding um, a suffix of OL. Since there are two OH groups available, the name we have to end it as diol. And the thing we what you have to understand is the OH position has to be mentioned. So now ethane, the positions are one comma two. That's why the final name for uh, glycol is ethane one comma two diol. This is how they prepare glycol. Similarly, we can go for the preparation of a glycerol. A glycerol we have learned in chemistry in action about in a very important area called as soaps. In soaps, uh, we were talking about uh, triglycerides. That means uh, long chain fatty um, substances. That is. Uh, vegetable oils or fats uh, will go for hydrolysis in the presence of a sodium hydroxide. So it is a soap making process. Yes, the name is saponification. So in saponification, we have this triglyceride CH2 single bond CH single bond CH2 and it's nothing but an ester group only, triester C double bond group. And that is ordered, added with an R group, an R group may a lengthy group. Suppose if we go for a, a palmitic acid combination, CH2 group 14 times and CH3. This is how they manufacture soap, CH2 14 times, CH3. CH3. And uh, in this process, we go for a hydrolysis uh, in the presence of sodium hydroxide and the bond breaks here. I'm writing NaOH this way, N-A-O-H. Um, we can write this way for a easy understanding. That is H-O-N-E. I'll break it here and add H-O-N-E. Similarly here also, H-O-N-E. 
and on the right side you see three times of sodium palmitate is formed as CH3, CH2 14 times, COO, NA. This is nothing but our soap. And after the soap is being precipitated removed in the presence of little of uh, uh, our sodium chloride and what is the remaining is CH2OH, single bond CHOH and single bond CH2. Okay. So this is nothing but glycerol. So how to give IBS name? We have already learnt uh, three carbon atoms. So it is a uh, probe, single bonded uh, propane and the position of OH group is 1, 2, 3. Right, 1, 2, 3. Three OH groups are there. So it is a triol. So propane, 1, 2, 3 triol is the IBS name for uh, glycerol. So this is how this uh, um, polyhydric alcohols like glycol and glycerol can be prepared and mm, these two can be mm, yeah, 2 mark or 3 mark particularly preparation of uh, glycerol can be asked as a uh, uh, special 3 mark because it is otherwise known as a saponification reaction and sometimes uh, they may ask in problems too the uh, compound A with the molecular formula, this they will give the A with the molecular formula, uh, they will give C2H4, they won't mention the name. And that on treatment, the base reagent uh, to give a compound with the molecular formula, C2H6O2, this is they will give B. So, A and B you have to identify. And um, if um, a, they may give a clue. That means uh, the A, they give an unsaturated compound. Unsaturated compound. From the clue, we can guess this. And another clue is the base reagent. That's why right. in chemistry, if you are thorough with the reagents or uh, oxidizing agents or reducing agent, uh, then the finding out the product is easier. And for this also, one of the uses this is used as an antifreeze in an automobile radiator. Then all these things, that's why in organic chemistry and a physical property or a use will help us in understanding an organic problem. So that will guide us to go for the right product, otherwise we will be misled. And now ethylene on various reagent, obviously alkaline, cold dilute alkaline potassium bimagnate will go for dihydroxylation to give uh, ethylene glycol or ethane 1, 2 dihydroxylation. So A you will identify, B you will identify and list A and B and uh, write their names with the formula, you will get 2 marks or 3 marks. So depending upon the um, uh, length of the problem, it may be asked in a 2 mark or a 3 mark. So that we have to uh, go through the content and uh, wherever required in your book itself you have to write uh, this question can be asked in a problem. So today we have learned something about uh, preparation of alcohols and uh, finally we learned about preparation of a polyhydric alcohols too.